Hey guys, so a couple days ago I went and saw a double feature at the movie theaters. Um, I know, I apologize, it was a couple days ago I went and did this. Uh, I you know, would have done reviews for these films if I wasn't so busy, especially yesterday. Um, if you don't know, I've mentioned this a few times in my videos. I uh, that I live in, like, basically Northeast Ohio. If you don't know, I've been following sports or anything like that. It's been a pretty crazy day yesterday. It was a pretty crazy day for sports. Uh, Cleveland, or I, I live, like, an hour from Cleveland and stuff. And so, you know, our baseball team is in the World Series. The basketball team just got their championship rings. I was not, like, I was not... Like, I was so busy yesterday watching so much sports. I, I didn't get a chance to go... Uh, uh, do my reviews, and then the day before, after, went, went, right after I went, uh, came home from the movie theaters, I was just tired. I didn't feel like doing any re reviews, so I apologize in advance if I forget anything. Um, I I still have the movie still fresh in my mind enough that I'll, I think I'll be all right, but we'll we'll see here. Uh, I apologize in advance if I forget anything. I remember after I record these videos, I will. Say something in the description or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> so the first thing I saw, first movie I saw, was The Birth of a Nation. The new Birth of a Nation. Not the 1920s one. Uh, I, I feel weird. It feels weird I have to fucking mention that. Uh, but this is a movie that I was really looking forward to for about a year now. Um, like... This movie premiered at Sundance, and I remember hearing, like, really big things about this thing. Like, people were raving about it. Critics were raving about it, like, how amazing this was. Uh, and I was like, when I found out what it was about, I was like, all right, that could be kind of an interesting movie. It's about the Nat, uh, it's about the Nat Turner slave rebellion, which was a real thing that happened, and it's something that's always kind of briefly mentioned in the history books, and I was like, surprised there was never a movie made about this. Um, and I remember, like, what is it, like, the studios kept, it made history for, like, being the most money that any studio has ever paid for an independent movie or something like that at Sundance for to distribute, uh, which I found funny that Fox Searchlight Pictures because they distributed 12 Years a Slave. Uh, they decided to distribute this one. I don't know why. I, thought, I don't know why they keep <laughs> distributing these kinds of movies, but whatever. But, uh, and how long? For a while there, it was like a strong Oscar contender. Like, I said about, like, lat earlier this year, I said, everybody should quit bitching about this. And not having diversity in the Oscar nominations. Wait till next year. Wait till the birth of a nation. Well, a couple things happened between then. Uh, that's kind of the Oscar talk has died down. Uh, one, the Nate Parker rape allegations. I'm not gonna get into that. I don't know what. I all I know has been there's been allegations against him. And it, that kind of hurt the film. And also, this movie bombed at the box office. I was the only one in the movie theater when I saw this. It's like making no money. <laughs> uh, it was a failure. Like, for a movie that, you know, Fox Searchlight Pictures paid so much money uh, for, I don't know if they're going to get their money back. Uh, so, going in, I still was kind of curious about the movie. Because it still looked like, it, like, for the trailers, it looked really good. Um... And you know, it was it was good. It was a good movie. I uh, I don't I, I, I do think it was a really good movie. Uh, it is uh, it's it's uh, really well acted, really well directed, uh, really well made. Um, I just don't think it's deserved the cra the praise it got earlier like last year, like the the large amount of praise. It's a good movie. I, it's, I I highly doubt it'll, it, I don't think it'll make my top ten list at all, uh, but it's a it's a it's a good sit. Uh, I I do recommend it. Um, cause there's cause, like overall, this movie is a very good. It's a really good movie. Um, the performance from Nate Parker as uh, 
uh, Nat Turner is really he 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 definitely probably will get an Oscar nomination for best actor. I'll be surprised if he de- doesn't. Uh, he is really good in this movie. <laughs> I, I I've never seen this guy in a movie before. I swear I haven't. If I have, you know, I just don't remember him. Uh, and this is my introduction as my introduction to him. Man, this guy is a really good actor, and I see a lot of potential in this guy. As long as you know this rape allegation shit don't uh, hurt his career, even though you know, stuff it hasn't hurt people like Brian Singer's career. Hell, he apparently molested kids, and he's still fucking working. Uh, uh, that's here nor here nor there. Um, but yeah, he yeah, like Nate Parker is really good. Like, I, like some of the quiet moments that he has in this movie, where he's not speaking a word, uh, and just the the his facial expressions, and everything else. He's really good. He's a really good actor, um, and he carries this movie. His performance definitely carries this movie. Um, for a while there, I thought this movie was like the black version of Braveheart because it was kind of following the same kind of story arcs, um, except it's, I'm getting a little spoilers here, spoiler, uh, except his wife doesn't die, but she gets beaten pretty badly and I think rape, they don't say rape, but I'm, I, you're left to assume that happens. Uh, by Jackie Earl Haley, who Jackie Earl, God damn it, Jackie Earl Haley, in a short time he's in this movie, which I thought he was going to be, like, the main villain in this movie, um, but he isn't, uh, he, he plays, like, this really sadistic guy that Nat Turner has to deal with pretty much throughout his whole life, even when he was younger, um, and, oh, man, Jackie Earl, God damn it, that guy, he can play a villain very well. And all this, also you have Army Hammer as a guy who Matt Turner grew up with, a white kid that he grew up with, like, uh, that, uh, he, uh, like, played with when he was younger, and now, uh, Army Hammer is older and running the plantation that, uh, Nat Turner is on, and basically, you know, his uh, Nat Turner is his master or his slave, and shit like that. Uh, you know, I, I like, I was like, for a while there, I was like, man, it, I was like, that, is that, that's, and I kept sitting there going, is that Army Hammer? And I was like, I'm not 100% sure, but then I then looked it up, and like, oh yeah, that was Army Hammer. As it looked like him, it kind of sounded like him, it was like, it has to be. <laughs> um, apparently, Gabrielle Union is in this movie too. I, I like. I had to look it up. And I'm like, what was she? I was like, I was like, really? It's played the character Esther, and I'm like, she was unrecognizable. I did not recognize her one fucking bit in this movie. Um, that's that's crazy. Uh, I didn't realize that she was even in this thing. Um, the movie is really well made, really well shot, and a beautiful, beautiful movie. Uh, it is, it is really, good. it's a gorgeous movie. Um, my one of my main problems with this movie was that it felt like it was pretty goddamn rushed. Um, good God, was it? Did it feel rushed? Uh, like, especially the first half of this movie, like, it goes for a lot of history very fucking quickly. Um, like, to the point that I felt like a lot of just plots, or like, story story arcs go nowhere. Like, the thing with his dad at the beginning, whatever happened to his dad, I guess it's just left open for interpretation that his probably dad got killed. But you never really know. Uh, really, there's no point to the wife in there. Which, being in there, uh, because, hell, I even read, uh, I was reading up on, like, some of the true story of Nat Turner, and I was, from what I was reading, it didn't sound like he had a wife, either, and this sounded like this character was made up. Maybe I'm wrong, somebody can tell me in the comments if I'm wrong on that. Uh, if so... That whole story arc of her getting beaten to like near nearly half to death and stuff like that doesn't really have a resolution. Uh, he doesn't. I, I mean, it kind of does and kind of doesn't. It's hard to explain without spoiling it. Uh, 
he um, is Jackie Earl Haley is the one who does it, but you know he like kind of makes it hint that maybe he's going to try to find out who it is and go after them, but never does. Um, I mean, it is. I, it does serve a purpose. I will say that it does serve a purpose in that, like it's one of the things that makes him reach his breaking point to the point, like because uh, he was a preacher that was preach. If you don't know the story, he was a preacher that was preaching to different plant, going to different plantations and preaching to uh, slaves about how they have to obey their masters and that you know. They basically never let him read any other 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 passages in the uh, Bible that you know was kind of against slavery and stuff like that. He, and he starts seeing some really brutal things that are being done to, to slaves, including that graphic fucking. That the most I think the most graphic scene in this movie was that part where he was knocking or the plantation owner was knocking that guy's teeth out. Oh, God, that was fucking horrible. Oh, I, I, I can't stand watching a movie where teeth is get knocked out of somebody's head. Oh, that was brutal. Uh, and, like, he finally reaches the breaking point, and he starts a rebellion. And, like, even the rebellion felt very rushed. Like, that rebellion... I, which I'm not going to complain. I'll talk about that in a second. But like that rebellion, like literally, lasts like less than ten minutes. Um, which, to be fair, in real life, it only lasted two days. Um, so I mean, of course, it was quick. I understand why it was quick. It was like you have to wait an hour and a half into the movie till that actually happens, and then like there's only a half hour left of the movie. <laughs> um, and, like, it's pretty brutal, like, uh, although they kind of shy away from the fact that he, it has been reported that he did murder children, too, and they kind of don't point, and point or, like, show that in this movie, which I feel is kind of bullshit, because, yeah, I understand, like, an eye for an eye, you know, slave children, were, you know, treated horribly and stuff like that, but that still doesn't really make it right what he did. I know, I'm sure people will get pissed at, pissy with me. I mean, but, like, you can't kind of forget about that. Um, yeah, it's been reported that he did, like, murder uh, some children, and that's not cool. Uh, because he, like, they literally went from plantation to plantation to plantation. From what I can tell also in this movie, this movie is not very historically accurate. This is Hollywood's version of history. If you actually read the uh, real stuff that happened, this movie is full of shit. <laughs> from, from what I can tell, from what I read, this movie is full of shit. Um, some of the stuff is a lot exaggerated. What a shock. Hollywood does that a lot. But it's still a good movie. I'm not... I, it sounds like I'm bitching about the movie more than... It, it's It's still a good movie. It's really well made. Um, I, I do want to mention about those weird fucking scenes where he's having those visions, which apparently he did. So I guess that's, you know, whatever. Where he's having those weird visions about, like... What was the fuck was that scene where blood was coming out of the corn? That was weird. Um, or he's seen a girl that's dressed as an angel, or some weird shit he, he see throughout this movie. Um, I said it does have some elements, like, the same story arcs as Braveheart. Not all entirely, like, it kind of ends the same way. Um, because I knew the story, I knew how it ends. And, like... The epilogue went. It, it, I always the, the thing I always take away is the epilogue of this movie, where it tells you what happens after the movie ends, and it's kind of the most graphic fucking details you'll ever hear in your entire life in an epilogue. Uh, it's pretty goddamn graphic. Uh, I was like, damn, and it kind of like like once it tells you the graphic details of what happens at after the end of, after the end of this movie, you're like. The movie ends, and you're like, wow, that was fucking graphic. I don't want to get into detail, like, if you don't know the story. Uh, but, yeah, I do recommend it. I, I do recommend this movie. I 
I like I said, I don't see this winning Best Picture. I don't. I see that Nate Parker getting an Oscar nomination. He deserves it. I hell, he probably a, a director nomination. Eh, eh, uh, yeah, he. Eh. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but I see. I think he deserves an Oscar nomination for best actor. That's that's a definite. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do recommend this movie. I, it sounds like I'm being negative, but it's not that bad of a movie. I, 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 I like it's good enough of a movie. I do recommend people check it out. I think it's pretty much leaving theaters nowadays, so you might have to wait till it comes on DVD or something like that. It, it's a good rental, um, definitely. Uh, I got two new trailers. One I really want to talk about. Uh, the first one I got uh, was the trailer for Jackie, uh, a movie about Jackie Onassis, which I never didn't know was being made until about a couple weeks ago when I saw this trailer pop up online. It's Natalie Portman playing Jackie Onassis. All right. And it's like her doing this weird accent, which I I don't know if Jackie Onassis spoke like that. I, or maybe she did. I don't know. Uh, and it's like takes place after the death of uh, John F. Kennedy and how she like copes with it and stuff like that. And I, it, it looks like it, 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 like it's, it's an os- obvious Oscar bait movie if I've ever fucking seen one, but. I hear good things about it. Early reviews for this have been really good. So, um, yeah, that's like I think that's a pretty good casting. Uh, Natalie Portman playing Jackie Onassis. I have no problem with that. And the other trailer I got was Get Out. Okay, I've seen some fucking weird trailers in 2016 so far. This might be one of the weirdest ones. Um, okay. It's a horror movie directed by Jordan Peele. Yes, that Jordan Peele. The guy from Key and Peele is directing a horror movie. That from what the trailers make it out to be, I think this is supposed to be a serious horror film. But honestly, it was kind of unintentionally fucking hilarious. Um... Because it's a movie about uh, a, a couple, a black and white couple, uh, the white girl dating this black guy who she has, she wants him to go meet her parents, and they don't know she's dating a black guy, and they go to this white suburb where all this weird, mysterious shit starts popping up, uh, and like they find out a lot of black people end up going missing in the suburb and the trailer is really stupid makes this movie look really stupid maybe this will be all right it's from fucking bloom house of bloom house of course sort of has million jump scares fuck bloom house (laughs) seriously fuck bloom house i'm tired of bloom house i i i hate that like uh um they pretty much produce every fucking horror movie nowadays. And I wish they didn't. Um, but yeah, this was this was. I I I maybe maybe I need to watch this trailer again. But this trailer was so weird. It was so weird and somewhat unintentionally funny. Um, what the fuck? Like it's go check this trailer out if you haven't seen it. Um, it sounds like a good idea for a horror movie, but the way this trailer presents it, it's so fucking weird, and I, I, I couldn't really take it seriously. Um, that's as far as trailers go. I'll be back here in a few minutes with my other review.